is this different than desktop as a service? Uh, so it isn't. Uh, mm -hmm. So that you know, it kind of falls in line. And we've talked about this under a few different names over the last couple of years. Uh, what was Windows Virtual Desktop or mm -hmm. WVD? That got renamed as Azure. Azure, as Azure, Azure Virtual, Virtual Desktop, Desktop today, yep. yeah. So, uh, so that, that became Azure. And then now we have what's basically the same product, again, rebranded once more, which is <laughs> Windows 365. Now, you might say, how is this important since we already know about it? But the Windows 365 name has popped up numerous times over the last five or six years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people felt that it meant that Microsoft was going to move Windows to a subscription model. That when you want to install Windows on your desktop, that you'd pay five bucks a month or, or whatever for your operating system, as opposed to outright purchasing Windows or getting a license when you buy hardware like you do today. They originally had the Office 365 branding, and mm -hmm. when they changed that to Microsoft 365, that's when people said, all right, Microsoft's going all subscription. But that's not what's happened. So the Windows 365 name, we now know exactly what that's going to be, and it is a virtual desktop. So you get a cloud-based desktop, and you pay based on the amount of hardware you pick, just like any mm -hmm. kind of Azure VM that's out there, or exactly like WVD. The difference is this one's designed to be a little more com um, consumer accessible. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to be a rocket scientist to set this up. You just click a few things and you're in there. Very similar to Amazon's workspaces. You know, you just swipe a credit card and now you got a, a persistent desktop. And then from any Windows, Mac, Linux machine, you're able to use remote desktop to connect in and have your common desktop on any machine that you use. They're making a big push towards Chromebooks and mm -hmm. low power devices that'll give you full desktop access now. So that's the idea. Pricing is still a little bit vague on it, but it looks like uh, because it's going to depend on the amount of processors and memory you get, the pricing will vary. So it could range from like $15 to $30 a month. So for some people, mm -hmm. that might be way too much. For other people, though, it might not be a, a, that bad. If you think about $30 a month or so $360 a year, how much does it cost to buy your own laptop? And and when I say a laptop, I don't mean the cheapest one you get at Best Buy, but a decent one. Sure. You know, it's a thousand bucks. So, so is this... Uh, do you, do you need to have another Windows machine? Is is that what you're remoting into, or it's across it's just, devices? It's just mirroring. You need to have some kind of hardware locally, mm -hmm. right? But it right. could it could be an iPad. Mm -hmm. It could be a Chromebook. It but could I mean, be... I could have just an iPad and yep. and have a Windows experience on that. Then without, I'm not remoting into my Windows computer somewhere else. Uh, that that's exactly right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So the the computer exists in the cloud, and so what you know, one benefit is using non-standard hardware or non-Microsoft hardware. The other advantage, though, is like if your house burns down, mm -hmm. you, your desktop is in the cloud. So you just go somewhere else and remote in, and all of your data is there. So it kind of gives you that off-site uh, you know, stability and redundancy that you want. One of the things I thought was cool about that is the state, uh, the configuration state stays the same. And what I mean by that is that let's say Don's logged into a Mac, uh, decides, hey, I'm going to pick up the iPad and walk, you know, somewhere in the building and log back into that desktop. The state stays the same across all the devices. Yep. So. Now, uh, it, it is not right for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say you're a hardcore gamer, mm -hmm. right? And you, you, you're trying to avoid having to buy that high-end video card, which is pretty hard to get right now anyway. Uh, the Windows 365 solution does have a GPU in it, but it's not a high-end one. So mm -hmm. you you can watch videos, you can play some older games, but you're not going to get like ultra settings in, I don't know, whatever version so, of so Battlefield can, is Yeah, out. you can play these games, you will lose very quickly yeah. Yeah. because you are lagging. So for gamers like that, they're better served with uh, like the GeForce Now or Microsoft has, I, I forget what their streaming one is called for games. Uh, it's like Xbox Game Pass Ultimate or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, so, you know, they have different things for that. But if you are a regular person that just uses a Windows computer, <laughs> if you've got productivity, you know, you're doing work type stuff, mm -hmm. uh, it, it'll work out really well. We'll have to see how well this takes off. I know Amazon Workspaces did not really change the market in any way. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see if Microsoft can make a difference where Amazon didn't. You think they're making the push just because of the hybridized work environment today? Uh, so that's a big part of it, mm -hmm. right? And I, I struggle with this with our, you know, with my day job, mm -hmm. uh, where when everybody started working remotely, working from home, mm -hmm. they were taking work computers home. And that means they're now in an unsecured location 24 hours a day. There's a lot of risk. Something like this would would kind of fix that. You know, they go home and use their own computer and remote into a desktop that I fully control that gives you that safety. Now, 
personally, I, I think we already had that. You know, that was something that was already available to us. So I don't know how well Windows 365 is going to take off. I kind mm -hmm. of feel like it's not going to make a giant splash. So you don't think we should make the uh, the claim right now? Dedicated PCs are gone. No, not, yeah, that, not, that's not. not this quick. That's not going to happen. You yeah. know, I could see it being useful for certain people, but like for me, I'm not giving up my desktop at home. Sure, yeah, yeah. me neither. <laughs> If you enjoyed that segment, be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here. And you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the IT world. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.